you know, in the States we have a saying that says that if you go to a seminar and you come back with one idea or one thing, then the seminar was worth it. Okay? So if you got one thing today that will help you in your quest to become whatever that is in your future, then it was worth your time to be here, okay? I have to tell you it was worth our time. We came a lot further than you did to this coming <laughs> on. But we, you know, I, I've been coming to Romania for 20 years. I love Romania, but more than Romania, I love Romanians, a big difference. And uh, you are great people, you are resilient people, you survived the madman. Uh, you know who that is? Yeah. And, uh, and the future is very, very bright. One thing I want to, that you probably heard today is not a whole lot of new things. You heard some things condensed into an, a way that you can sort of comprehend it. Okay? Uh, there are not a lot of secrets in becoming successful. There really, it's not a magic bullet. There's no one book that you buy or one thing that you do and suddenly you're whoever, the, the richest man. But one thing I want to tell you is I want to tell you a little story about a boy that I know. And when this little boy was about five or six years old, he learned something, and it was this, that Jesus loved him. And he thought, and that's pretty cool. And so he, he, he said, I, I, I want to know this guy. And everything went fine in his life until he was about 10 years old. But when he was 10 years old, his parents got divorced. And it was a very, very bad divorce. In fact, the mother changed the names of all those children so that they would never be found by their father again and moved them all the way across the country in the United States. And it wasn't long after that that she realized that she couldn't take care of four children and work. And so she put those children in an orphanage. And while those children were in an orphanage, they were physically and sexually abused. And that little boy was me. And I lived in that environment until I was 15, and I ran, and I ran as hard and as fast as I could. The year was 1969 when I graduated from high school. So you go, oh, he is old. <laughs> but you know the place to be in 1969? It was California. And I went to California, and I grew my hair long, and I started doing drugs. And it wasn't long after that that I was a pretty much a, a wreck. And I decided that well, this isn't working for me. I need to get into the business world and make something of myself. So I cut my hair and I went into the business world. And I was very successfully initially. I went to the top of Sheraton and Hilton Hotels. I was a consultant. And I would fix their problem hotels. And the, part, the thing that I would fix was the food and beverage department. And I majored in the food or the beverage? Which one? The beverage! <laughs> I got to Austin, Texas. A friend of mine said, would you like to do some cocaine? I said, yeah. The first time I did co cocaine, I was an addict. Within weeks, I was putting it in my arm with a syringe. Shortly after that, I was putting it in my ankles because I had track marks up and down my arms. I started selling cocaine. I'm a businessman. Hey, find the pay and the solution. <laughs> uh, I started selling about $10,000 of cocaine a week. Today, that's about $100,000 in today's money. I was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble. I had offered a job in another state 
which is a terrible state to go to, and I took that job because I thought, if I can get away from this influence, I will be okay. And I stopped uh, doing cocaine, but I transferred the addiction to alcohol. And every day, I drank one bottle of scotch whiskey, every day. I got married to my wife, who is back there, she is the most beautiful girl in this place. One night I was drunk. I was always drunk. <laughs> so that wasn't new. I wasn't drunk. And I had an affair. My wife didn't, she found out about it. She didn't hear about it. She walked in. And she walked out. And she took my little girl, a one-year-old daughter, and she walked out that night. And I went home to an empty house. What happened, it happened at work. I lost my job. I went home to a house that was empty. I lost my wife, my daughter. And I sat for a few minutes in my bed, and I just said a very simple prayer. I said, God, I'm in trouble. Help me. And she called me the next morning, and she said, I've been up all night. And I recognize that God has forgiven me for everything that I've ever done. So I need to forgive you. That's a pretty quick prayer answer. For two years, we tried to put our marriage back together. We were not very good at it. One day, my, my new boss came to me and said, you are an alcoholic. You must go into treatment. Uh, and by the way, let me regress for a second. For, when, when I said that prayer in my house, I heard a voice, not loud, in my head. I heard a voice that said this, Scott, come on back. Scott, come on back. I hated that voice. You see, I would shake my fist at God and I would say, I hate you! Leave me alone! Why? I blame God for what happened to me when I was a little boy. I believe that if God was a good God, He would have never let that happen to me. But He answered that prayer very quickly. And when my boss told me, you are an alcoholic, you have a problem, I went and I said, God, I have a problem. Please help me! And God took that desire away from her immediately. So, all the things we've talked about today, about being successful, about being successful, I was not very successful. As a person, I was not successful. I was a failure. I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. Today, yes, I'm a successful businessman. But why? It's because of what God has done in my life. Not because I have any great skills. I'm being silent for this. <laughs> but it says catagraph, it doesn't work in me. I'm what? sorry. What? It, it, it's a business conference. It's not a it's religious right. conference. I'm That's terribly true. sorry and apologize for this. That's very true, but we have to, if, if we're looking at the whole picture, at the whole picture, when you, are a, when you are a person who is representing your business, what you are is what will end up being the product that you sell. Right? Yeah. You know, I don't want to talk about this. Okay. Can put this in prayer. Okay, fine. Anyway, so that's the situation that I came into. Being a success requires that you, as a person, have to be what you are in here. And it's not about your failures, because all successful businessmen have failed. All successful businessmen have failed. The ones who end up on top are the ones that, after they fall, they pick themselves back. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. Um, one of the things that... Okay.
Oh, yeah? Okay. Anyway.